So my name's Adam Simon, and um, I'm here to talk about Smart Home, which I'm calling a game changer for the channel. So we're going to talk about that. We are partners of Distry. We're very proud to be partners of Distry. And I would like to thank Distry for inviting us to speak today. And I'd like to say a big word of thanks to Stuart and to Aurora and to Liam for all the work that they do to make this a great event. So thank you, Stuart and Aurora and Liam and all the Distry team. Yeah, good. That's very nice. So, um, and the focus of my talk today is going to be about what the channel can do about smart home. The data is going to be about the channel, and the focus is going to be about what the channel can do. So just to introduce who Context is, many of you know us. Uh, we have been supporting Distry since the very beginning, so you've probably seen us in the past. But if you haven't, this is just a little word about who we are. So our panel is the channel data reference for Europe. Uh, we collect data at all points of the supply chain. So we collect it from vendor, distributor, um, and also from retailers and corporate resellers. Uh, we have the largest distributor uh, panel in the world. Um, and we use that in order to generate the data which you know. And um, we are global. We do sales and price tracking globally, uh, expanding into new regions all the time. Last year, we opened up uh, a panel in Argentina. We did it in record time, six months from beginning to end. And we have all of the main distributors in Argentina on our panel. Um, and the way that we sum up what we do, who we are is that this is our tagline, your responsive research partner. So your, we belong to you, the channel. Responsive is because we really care about working with um, our partners. Um, research is 35 years of methodology that has been developed that makes our figures really reliable and things that you can trust. And then partner long term. We think long term about how we build relationships um, with the people that we work with. So my presentation is going to be in three parts. The first part is I'm going to put smart home into the context of European distribution. The second is I'm going to share with you the latest consumer research on smart home. And the third is we're going to talk about these game changers uh, for this really important market. So the first thing is to give you the broadest context, this is how much went through the channel in 2018 from our database. So these are real numbers built up invoice by invoice from our distributor partners. In the main categories that we cover, we have something like 90% coverage because we have most of the distributors who share their data with us. If you don't, please do in the future because we're always building the panel, welcome new distributors. So that 83 billion is a really, really solid figure saying what actually went through the channel in 2018. This is Europe, Russia, and Turkey. Um, what you can see is that the largest category is mobile computing, which is 15 billion. It grew by a very respectable 5% in 2018. It was a good year. Uh, telecommunications was the star uh, turn of 2018 because telecommunications actually grew by 13% through distribution in 2018, a remarkable performance. When you look at this data in a different way, which is looking at the highest growth categories, then smart home is number one. It is 47% growth rate, uh, very similar to the number from uh, future source. They said 46, we say 47. However, the number you can see is much, much smaller, which is what's going through distribution. So, in fact, it's 147 million, 137 million that went through uh, distribution. Nevertheless, this is from virtually nothing a few years previously. So this is a big success story, and it's obviously going to augur the future in terms of uh, growth category uh, for distribution. Then, just a word about AV systems, audiovisual. So there you can see another big growth category 
And this is the Apple EarPod, which has been really driving the change um, there. And the last one, just to point out, is that through distribution, wearables has now become a 500 million euro business. And that's driven largely by smartwatches and fitness trackers. So that's just to give you the, the overall overview. Uh, if we look now, we can see the growth quarter by quarter. So if we look quarter by quarter, you can see what a great growth curve that is. Isn't it fantastic? Every quarter, we couldn't believe it last year, the growth was happening in distribution, reaching 8.7% in the fourth quarter. Italy was the highest performing, at over 10% growth. The UK had a stellar fourth quarter. So m all of the countries pretty much were in growth in 2018. If you look at it on a regional basis, you will see that it was slightly different uh, because, in fact, Turkey and Russia, which had a really strong start to the year, uh, saw their growth figures going down towards the end, driven by currency and other issues in the local countries. And if you look at it on a vendor basis, then you get to see there are two big giants in the distribution business, Apple and HP. Both of them 10 billion euros going through the channel. Um, you will see that there is one enormous star in terms of growth in 2018, Huawei, which is what's behind the telecoms growth. 89% year-on-year growth. Pretty phenomenal. And then if you look at Dell, uh, you will see that's also the, another big success story of 2018, which is increasing its uh, share um, and growing by 34%. Uh, so more and more using the channel, Dell. Now, you don't see any smart home vendors in our top 10. Well, obviously, there's a little bit of Apple in there, okay? So let's have a quick look at what the smart home has done. And you can see here that it is the speakers which have been driving the growth uh, through distribution. Uh, some distributors picked up some very nice contracts uh, with the big uh, manufacturers of smart speakers. And you can see that coming through in the data, achieving a 50 million Q4 2018. And we expect that to grow. The other ones are steadily growing which is security, lighting, et cetera. Now, if we take a look at the overall size of that smart speaker market, uh, we estimate that it's 162 million at the end of 2018, excluding the Chinese. So the, really, the three main ones, uh, the HomePod, the Echo, um, and, um, of course, Google as well, Google Home. 100 million Echoes. That number comes from Amazon themselves. They revealed it at the end of December. Uh, 50 million Google Homes, and the rest is um, HomePod, which is much, much smaller. So that's just to give you the context, a little bit of the background. Now we're going to talk about smart home, and we're going to talk about how the consumer attitudes towards smart home is evolving. And really what I want to do is take you on a story, on a journey. I want you to go with me into the mind of the consumer. And the story is very simple. Growth of awareness, more people buying gradually, still some big barriers. And then the challenge is, what can the channel do to help this category grow? That's the challenge. I hope there are many people in this room who will be like motivated by that challenge. Before we start, I just have a little uh, video to play to you, which is um, a humorous look at the way that smart home might be seen by some people. It's the story of a man who goes to the dentist um, and um, has a little operation. He lives in a smart home, and it's the impact that it has on him in terms of his relation to his smart home uh, product. And many people who think about smart home might be thinking ab about this dental appointment. Clean jazz. Clean jazz. Smoothie. Making smoothie. Calendar. No meetings today. Remember, Tandlerke at 9.30. Fire off. Fire off. Open door. Door open. 
sånn. Så skal vi sette en til. Ah, ja. Hold from door. Wrong voice command. Hold from door. Wrong voice command. Hold from door. Repeat that. Hold from door. I didn't understand that. Hey, hold from door. Play on the floor. Sing on the floor. Get on the floor. Hold from the door. Hold from the door. Error. Hey, radio. Who the rock? Hold from door. Yeah, makes us all laugh, doesn't it, when we see that. Rema 1000 is a Norwegian discount retailer that only sells few products. So it's advertising this to say, keep things simple, you know? And that's really part of the secret of the smart home, making simple propositions that don't make people worried if they go to the dentist and they speak, they won't be heard or understood by their smart home and won't be able to get in. So let's just to bring ourselves back to Earth, let me just tell you a little bit about the origins of our smart home survey. We've done four for the last four years to track the evolution of, let's say, consumer sentiment about smart home. Uh, this latest one is in seven countries. Uh, and we work with the channel. We work with manufacturers, retailers, and distributors, and also smart home associations. Uh, to build up a really credible set of questions to understand what the consumer is actually thinking. So as I say, let's go on this journey uh, in terms of, uh, with the data being a little bit of our guide. So the first thing is, no surprise, everyone pretty much knows about smart home now. What they understand by it is very different from person to person, but they kind of heard about smart home. Second thing that's going on now is people are getting more and more connected objects in their home. So you can see a steady increase year by year. We're now at around about eight connected objects per home. Um, that compares to the US with 10.4. So we're pretty, pretty close and we're growing and that's an important part of growing this, the smart home. In terms of product awareness, uh, just to even show you how quickly the smart speaker came onto the scene, we weren't even tracking uh, the awareness of it until last year. And of course, it's the number one in terms of awareness, uh, which is uh, pretty amazing. Everyone's heard about it. There's been some good growth. If you look at some of the categories, like light bulbs and smart doorbell, people are more and more aware of those. Uh, but one of the really interesting things is, my goodness, there is also some flatness in terms of consumer awareness. Look at the, um, the thermostat. You'd think that one with the Nest advertising and the Hive in the UK and all that, NetApp, all these big brands, you'd think that more people would be knowing about it and aware about it, but it's still only at around about the 50% mark. And the smoke detector as well. So there's still a lot of work to do in educating the consumer and making them aware. If we then move on to uh, product ownership, what we see of course, everyone's got a smartphone, that's no surprise. What we see is the ownership of the speakers going up, um, and now it's around about 12% of the population. Again, a comparable figure in the US is around 25%. So we've got a little bit of catch up to do there, but it's still impressive, the amount of growth there. What do people do with the speakers? Well, they use it mainly for entertainment, they use it uh, for consulting, uh, let's say about the weather, they, they ask jokes, uh, do things like that. But look at that on the left-hand side, there's a third of people who are starting to use it uh, in order to connect with other devices, uh, which is a little bit what Jack was saying, this driving force of the smart speaker driving other products. So we are seeing that happening. If we look here, you see that um, we were expecting in 2018, we were expecting that uh, voice would increase its, let's say, attraction as access to smart home. It's only gone up very marginally, uh, but in fact, um, it's still the smartphone which is seen as the main way of doing it. Uh, but we expect that to change uh, over time. Now we're going to throw in a little bit of a negative note, because we're the consumer, we're on this journey, we're becoming more aware of it, 
uh, different products, buying a smart speaker, but then bam, privacy. Okay, did anyone see the news yesterday about Nest's hidden microphone? which is terrific. There is a hidden microphone in the Nest thermostat, and Google said it wasn't a secret. Well, I saw a lot of response on social media saying, tell us another one. Um, any case, there's all these fears, aren't there, that people are going to see what's going on inside your home. Deutsche Telekom is the only main company that I know that says your data is your data. We're never going to export it. We're never going to do anything with it. All the others want to use your data. So privacy is really the, the big risk which people see uh, in terms of smart home and which whenever we have a solution, we have to be able to respond to that question uh, of privacy. And at the moment, it's obviously a big debate socially in all of our countries. This is one, how one lady explains what it feels like when you have something in your house. Uh, what was significant to me about this is that it, it, it was allowing tracking to move off of computers and off of screens and actually into my home. And just getting this really like basic, boring information, but revealing information about how we live our lives. I guess it just bothers me that it's like tracking moving into our physical lives instead of just in a place that we can kind of at least control because we're on a screen. The good news when you look at the data is that some of the barriers are actually coming down. So we ask people the question, which is, um, what is putting you off buying a smart home product? And you can see that in pretty much all of the areas, since 2016, the uh, actual resistance is coming down. So people are, I, I don't understand enough, was the big thing, big barrier. Now that's come down. Um, I'm just not interested in smart home. You know, 55% of British people said, I'm not in just not interested in 2015, and that's come down to 40%. So sometimes the negative helps you to understand the change which is taking place. Uh, I don't see any benefits. That's coming down. So that was in relation to people we knew were not going to buy smart home products. Now, here are some fundamental perceptions. We asked everybody whether or not they said they were going to buy smart home products. Look at that middle one. Smart home products automate tasks that don't really need to be automated. 50% of people, it hasn't shifted at all in the last few years. So there's a real fundamental you know, value equation which needs to be sold, which is why the smart home products actually uh, bring value. Good news in terms of uh, the, the consumer on his journey. He's now overcome some of the barriers. He said he's going to buy. Well, guess what? He's going to spend more money. And so in the first early years when we did it, it was the sweet spot was up to 150 euros. And that has now moved up to the 150 to 250 euros. And in some countries, notably Sweden, it's in the 250 to 500 category. So people in their mind, remember, as you think how much you're prepared to spend is how much do you value that service and think it's worth it. So that's going up, which is, which is positive. This one here is showing the intention to purchase in different categories. And what you can see is that it's advancing in all categories. So that's, again, a positive showing that uh, things are beginning to move. The smart light bulb is number one, the smart thermostat, and the smart speaker. They're the three ones. Now, the last real element of what we ask to the consumers, which is relevant to this channel question, what can the channel do, is we ask the question, how much are you prepared to spend, or are you prepared to spend 15 euros a month on a service which is related to smart home. And what you see is that I've just highlighted the none of these. You can see that that was at around about 30% and it's now come down to 25%. That means that 75% of the people consistently being surveyed are saying we're prepared to spend 15 euros a month. 
So our belief is that the smart home as a service is in fact the game changer for the future. And what we did was that uh, I also, uh, and the chair of a smart home associ association in the UK, we, we launched a competition and we said to anyone under 35 in the smart home industry that we wanted them to do a vlog or a Word document explaining the barriers to smart home and how to overcome it. Um, and we had entries from Google, we had entries from Sky, and we had entry from a 24-year-old who's starting out on his career and who captured it absolutely beautifully. I'm going to share with you a couple of minutes of what he said about smart home as a service, and then we'll develop it from there. So let's see what this has to Where say. Where does that leave the smart home industry? A target market that doesn't like purchasing products and a product offering in its infancy. The most effective way forwards is going to be offering the smart home as a service. The renting generation require flexibility from their fixtures and fittings, which means the industry is going to have to work together to agree on a common architecture. Offering a service that allows consumers to personalise their living space within the confines of their tenancy agreement is key. Offering entry-level products as part of a subscription service would guarantee a more reliable revenue stream for businesses, allowing people to experience the smart home without the large initial investment, and it also delivers a marketing tool. If you like this, upgrade to unlock new features. Nobody's going to invest hundreds, maybe thousands of pounds on a technology that might be obsolete in a few months unless they know they can upgrade as part of that service. And that's the next key point, service. Other than the price point, this smart home ecosystem is still perceived as just a collection of things. Light bulbs, doorbells, ovens, TVs, garage doors, it's all stuff. Bringing all that stuff together as a service, using Siri, Alexa, Cortana or Google as not just personal assistants, but as a butler, is then a reason for people to invest. Consumers want technology that makes their life easier, that works together, that gives them more time with their family, even technology that, to a certain extent, looks after them. This is the reintroduction of domestic service through technology, available to the masses through affordable, non-committal, incremental purchases, developing stronger, more predictable revenue streams for businesses, and improving the lives of everyone, from the working mother to the stay-at-home dad, the lonely pensioner, even the family pet. A better connected future where we have more time for one another. Now that's exciting. Thanks. He did really well, in fact, in doing that. And he was only really discovering the smart home as he did it. But he really articulated very well. Now, is that all a dream, this idea of smart homes as a service, or is it real? So I want to share with you um, one example, which is uh, a Best Buy example. Uh, in fact, it was already mentioned by Bob. Um, so Best Buy have put in place a caring service for old people using smart home technology. A 24 hour, seven days a week emergency response and proactive safety monitoring. People pay a subscription to have this. Best Buy helps to put it in place. Here is a great example of smart home as a service and of the future, which we think is going to be there for smart home. Let's just take that down to a little level of what is really the thing that convinces people about value, and that's putting it into the use case. The people who invent the use cases are the ones who sell the products in this area. So here are some use cases to help you identify a fall event. This is selling this to an older person to buy this technology, motion sensors. Help is always at hand. They're developing smart speakers now so that you can tell them if you've fallen. You know what? Old people hate wearing those things around their neck. You know, those alarm buttons. They feel like they're kind of cattle almost. And here, if they have their smart speakers in every room, they can alert people that way. Stay healthy at home. Have a fitness tracker or a smartwatch. As you're getting older, you need to think about this. Know that everything is safe. The, the ring doorbell or other doorbells, the camera. Help for the hard of hearing. So lights, some of these tremendous um, use cases are there of using lights to alert people about, for example, an incoming phone call. 
and then keeping away unwanted visitors. I know one telecoms company which offered this as a service, and it was very, very popular. The lights come on at random times, and you think that there's somebody there. All of this is smart home. So here is smart home as a service, which is, f for me, one of the great opportunities for the channel to get involved in. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about how we think that can happen. Here's another one, which I just throw in there, because if you're a distributor, you've got to be, have your eyes and ears open. I know that's what distributors do. But look at this one. This is IKEA. They're, they've got this hatching, this plan at the moment to use the smart blinds as a way of taking uh, over an important position in the smart home. If you're French, for example, you know you have to have blinds. You have to close them at night for insurance purposes, and you have to then open them in the morning. We lived in France. My wife used to close them. She used to open them at night because she said, I don't have to do that in the morning then when I get up. But then we discovered that we were not covered by our insurance. So imagine when you take away all that hassle with properly, um, let's say, automated smart blinds. Okay? So this is definitely for continental Europe. But of course, being IKEA, they're going to find a very cheap and accessible way of doing it and build an ecosystem that way. So you have to really think about different ways of doing it. So we see that uh, the opportunity for distributors is to be the trusted advisor and partnership broker. They have a really unique position, distributors, in the center of an ecosystem. It takes investment, evidently, but at the end of the day, very often it is the distributor who can bring together the solutions with these multi-products and then take a solution to market, whether that be service or product, both of those. The other opportunity for distribution is a multiplicity of channels to market. So, for example, take house builders. House builders, five years ago, if you said, I want to wire up a house for a smart home, they'd say, the cu end customer won't pay for it. Now, it's completely different. Most of the house builders want to wire up homes so that they're ready for smart home. If you look at the other channels to market, you've got SMB, small and medium-sized businesses. The distributors have a great link into the SMB, helping them support the B2B side of things. Local government. I'm aware at the moment of various projects going on in all countries of local government wanting to reduce the costs of looking after their old people by having in place proper technology to do the help with the caring and reduce their budget. And I know of distributors who are going for that business. So this is a B2B opportunity. Then, of course, you've got the B2C opportunity through the retailers and the e-tailers as well. And lastly, you've got the whole wearables business as well. So all of these opportunities of growing uh, the, the channel. So I really want to end off on an upbeat note with you. I hope that this has given you not just the data, but also the motivation to actually make this happen through the channel and to make the difference. Because we think that the channel has always proved itself to be so inventive and able to take on new challenges that we see the smart home as being such an obvious area of growth and opportunity for the channel to take up um, and to really find new ways of doing it. So about, uh, it was about in November, we had a meeting of this uh, Smart Home Building Association. We had various people there. We talked about all the barriers to entry and we talked about the opportunities. And so I'm gonna end off with a little video which was done by the same person, Thomas, summing up what we said. When you see the negatives, think of them as opportunities. And at the end, the big opportunity is to get the message out there, to believe in this technology, and to want to make it happen uh, through the channel. So let's just enjoy this final video.
Thank you very much.